Hi everyone, in this video we will take a look how to create the flood simulation using a predefined uh, 3D model of the area that contains rivers, some flood areas, uh, maybe some another areas which can be flooded, cannot be flooded depending on the hay level, on the water inflow, on some on some uh, imaginary flow, uh, imaginary walls of the simulated area and so on and so on. Alright, so uh, so right now let's open project files that contain a predefined uh, that contain predefined uh, files. So we'll have uh, so we'll have the map file. We will have um, um, uh, the area perimeter file and the bathymetry points. Okay, so let's open them all. Um, and SMS software asks us would we like to generate image pyramids. Well, image pyramids, it's kind of cached images that can be loaded faster than the whole image. Well, definitely our answer will be yes. So we click on the yes button and the pyramids are being created. So, so what do we see here? What do we see at, at this moment? Well, we see image of the area itself. We have uh, we have river there, and we have black points. Black points are from the map data. So without the map map data and scatter data, we have only image. So the map data is just a perimeter. Uh, well, the perimeter is located on X, Y surface and it plays its role only uh, in, in case of flood simulation as, um, as the perimeter of area. Uh, this perimeter of area just, just borders the working area which can be analyzed afterwards. About, uh, about the entire um, haze of the points, well, they have been defined using, using scatter data. Okay, scatter data are represented here as red points. Um, and by using those red points, we can set up the basimetry. In other words, the hay of, of each point uh, inside the model. Okay, so let's try to use rotate tool just, just to rotate the model and we can see. So we have the river, uh, the water inflow into model will happen through this channel and here we will have some barrier that will not allow the water to go outside the mo model. So we will have only inflow um, into our uh, model. With, uh, and without outflow, um, this area and this area they will be flooded. So we will so we'll create the flood simulation model. Okay, so as you see, while we rotate the model, the image was disappeared. Uh, it's totally fine. We don't have to worry about this. Okay, so we can click this plain view button to see every object we have in our project. All right. So first of all, um, first of all, we need to work on graphical representation of data. Well, how to do this? We will try to use a display display option to uh, to uh, to modify the view of the scatter points. Okay. So right now, scatter points, as you have seen, are located three dimensionally. So we so we can see a uh, model uh, model um, depth. And high and high points only once we are only when we rotate the model. But we can do this graphically by just taking a look on display display options and by modifying the view how we display the scatter points. Um, as far as you see, we have points uh, in the in the scatter view. So points are activated for the view, and we are going to de deactivate them. But we are going to activate the contours like in previous video we took a look and we say that contours will be filled with the color. And transparency of the color will be half, so it will be 50%. Uh, well, when we set up this configuration, we press OK to apply it.
Right, so and right now we have pretty fancy image where each color represents the the deep or high level. So actually that's the Z Z coordinate which actually uh, looks for, for looks um in the vertical direction and we and we see the map from the top so actually we don't see that uh, somehow dimensionally but we see that position graphically using color all right um, so next we have to wait we have to work on on areas which are bordered with map data parameters so for this purpose we are going to create domain so we'll work with domain lines domain is just a group of uh, parameters used in this model uh, and we will activate uh, the feature um, select feature polygon so this option will allow us to select polygons we can work with so we have one flooded area another flood area the river itself and some half of the road we have some part of the road we have so as you see here we have the road on the map and we can even place uh, a part of that road in the 3d model okay well that's fine in this case what have what do we have to do well we have to create material but but to create the material with a specialized coefficient we have to activate srh 2d so srh 2D uh, is the module that allows us to create the flood simulation. So let's activate this, and we and we see that somewhere uh, in our model we have motion line. So what is the actual motion line? The motion line is the line that can work as uh, as the input of the water in our model, as the output of the water. So we have uh, inflow, we have outflow, or we can set up some barriers that doesn't allow the water to go out, out uh, to go out from the model. Um, before they reach some certain hay, the water elevation, in other words. All right, that's great. Um, in this case, uh, everything is fine for now, and we are about to create a material. So we are going to um, open materials properties window, and we are going to set up a new material. I will name it as my material. Okay, and we have to select the man in the row that's coefficient. I will say it will be uh, 0 0.05, and I will apply this roughness coefficient for all uh, for all uh, polygons I have in the in my model. Okay, fine. Uh, in best case scenario, I would have to create um, different materials with different man and roughness coefficient for each area, for each of those uh, se just selected areas. But in my case, uh, I'm not going to do this. Uh, if you if you guys like, you can do this on your own. Okay, fine. So by pressing Ctrl A, I'm selecting all polygons I have, and I will set up the configuration of them, the configuration of all of them just just in one step. So I click on attributes of polygons, and I say that mesh type uh, of these polygons will be pattern. Uh, the basimetry will be taken from the scatter set. Um, so once we select the scatter set, we have to select even exact data set of the scatter set we are going to use. In our case, we have only one uh, with the name of Z. So we have to guarantee that this uh, data set is selected and we have to press OK. All right, and we have to assign the material. Well, since I created my material with the name of my material, I'm selecting it. And for now, it's fine. So everything is done correctly, and I'm pressing OK. All right, so right now, the configuration is done, and I'm going to save up my project. OK, I will name it triple P, let it be so. Um, the name of the project doesn't matter at all. All right, so I just saved uh, my results, and right now I'm going to create the mesh. So mesh will allow me to make calculations, um, like in previous video we took a look. So mesh allows us to make calculations by taking into account uh, each mesh element. So each mesh element plays its um, 
a transitional or, tra or tra or value transfer rule. Okay, so uh, how to do this? So I click on the domain since I'm, since I'm going to uh, convert um, uh, the polygons uh, with assigned by symmetry to them to the mesh. So I click exactly domain with the right mouse button and I click on convert map to, to dimensional mesh. Okay, uh, in this uh, conversion window we don't need to do anything so we just click OK and that, that would be great, that would be fine. Okay, so so right now what do we have? We have a lot of triangles as you see. Uh, so each triangle is the uh, is the value uh, transferring or distribution sec sector, um, and the and water will be distributed exactly um, exactly uh, from one triangle to another triangle. So exactly these triangles will be used for uh, for the flood calculation. Right, so let's save it and let's work once again on the mesh, uh, on the mesh uh, view style. So let's go to display, display options, let's open to dimensional mesh sector and let's, uh, and let's deactivate nodes. So nodes were the, those dots we see, uh, we see on the workspace and elements aligns between dots. And we will definitely uh, show contours. We are not deactivating node strings because each node string is the line, the motion line. Um, so we have to see them. So we activate contours and in contours configuration we set up the color fill uh, with the half transparency. So, we, so once again we will see the mesh in the similar way as we see scatter information. Alright, so let's click OK and we see this fancy image. Alright, fine, let's save it and let's maybe work on the node strings on um, on, on the lines that can work as the in as the um, input flow and output flow of the water so for this purpose i will deactivate map map data and scatter data okay so so it guarantees that i can see motion lines without without any any problems so i'm going to activate domain in mesh data so i will work with domain information with uh, with the mesh information so as you can see the set of buttons is being changed so i'm going to select uh, node strings okay so i will uh, so here we have the input of the water in into our project we have three points but I'm going to make one of them so I click on March selected okay so I have one point that characterizes these three lines here okay and I'm going to assign uh, the water uh, input okay so I have a motion line configuration and I will use inlet crew so it means subcritical inflow uh, which basically allows to make the in the water input to the model and I will use cubic centimeters um, and I will say that uh, that I will use a uh, thousand cent cubic centimeters per a second as the inflow of the water. Okay, so I click OK. It's fine. So we have the water uh, the water input to the model. Okay, so maybe you remember, guys, that this part was the blocking one. So we will block the channel. So it will be impossible to water to go out from the model. So I'm selecting these three points, and I will merge them in the same way I work with the water source for our uh, for our flood simulation model so I'm clicking merge selected okay and right now I have one point that characterizes um, this uh, this line and once again I will assign I will click assign BC so I will uh, I will uh, select exit H so I will create the barrier barrier of uh, of 731 meter for example and if water will reach that me that uh, if water will reach these barriers and it will go outside um, the model uh, okay fine so so i will apply this so we can see uh, exit h written here next to the point Alright, so I'm going to leave only these two 
two node string points uh, in my model. So I, I highlight one, I press and hold shift and I select another one. And I'm going to click right mouse button and click on invert selection. So I will deselect those two points, but I will select all other points. And I'm going to erase all other uh, points. So I'm, so I'm going to uh, click on node strings. Or maybe just yes just delete selected okay so uh, so I'm erased sele selected no strings so I have only two of them left so uh, in this case I have to renumber them so they will so they will receive different identificators than uh, they had previously all right that's great. So at this point I'm going to show all information I had about the model. So I have uh, I have um, polygons, I have the map, I have the scatter data and so on and so on. And I'm going to save my project. Okay, fine. So right now we can set up a simulation, the flood simulation. For this purpose we are going to visit SRH 2D section. And here we would, we would need to open the model control window. In the model control window we can find out configuration related to the flood simulation. Ok, so what do we have here? Uh, we have um, uh, initial conditions. So from the very beginning we assume that there is no water at all in our model. Uh, we define the time step for simulation, so it will be one second, one simulated second, and we are about to set up uh, the total uh, simulated hours, so we will have four simulated hours. Alright, about the floor. floor. Um, section about the flow tab. Well, we can leave data as they are written there, and about the output, we will say that we will have information in uh, in CI um, unit system, so it's a globally acknowledged system, and we will save information uh, after each 0 0.02 simulated hours. So we will have uh, simulated data after each this period of time. And we, can, and we will be able to take a look on those saved results after each this time moment. OK, fine. So we will have to click on OK. And we can uh, take a look if our simulation contains errors. So we click on model check. OK, so we have no model check violated, so it means everything is fine. Uh, and we can sa save our project and run the simulation. To run the simulation, we have to click on SRH2D and then we have to click on Save Export and Launch SRH2D. Alright, so right now we will have a couple of additional windows on the screen. So the, so the smallest one will be Data Preparation window. We will see this in a couple of seconds. OK, we have it. So this window prepares data for simulation. And here we have uh, exact calculational module that calculates the flood simulation. All right, so here we have some introductional window that contains uh, overall information about the simulation. Uh, and moreover, we have, uh, we have the simulation uh, process uh, plot. So actually here we have four simulated hours and we have simulation plot line. So once this plot line re reaches this uh, horizontal position of four hours, the simulation will be uh, will be finalized. Okay, so uh, in this case we will have to wait a bit until the simulation will be finished. So let's wait for some for some minutes. Alright, so in the end we have the window that program terminated with exit zero with exit code zero. Uh, it literally means that there were no problems uh, during the program running, so the program, the calculation program was finished successfully. And at this point we can we can close the window. <clears throat> and we can close as well as this one um, for calculation uh, data preparation window. 
Okay, that's great. Uh, so right now we can <coughs> load the calculated results. So we click on open triple uh, uh, p um, s r h 2 d well we are opening the domain and we are opening each file of extensions file so this file contains couple of parameters for example water elevation in meters and here we have time moments um, <coughs> for which we have uh, saved information okay so uh, so we will definitely see uh, colors being changed here on the workspace so let's go through time moments and let's see how the color is being changed okay so so we see that um, that water elevation level was changed so we see it graphically um, in color so we see that right now that there is a flood happening flood beginning and if we will just uh, scroll uh, down our active uh, time moment through the time uh, through the save time moments um, through the save time moments list so we will see how the flood simulation happens all right we can even make the film of this time moment so for doing this we will click on data film loop as we took a look at previous time in i mean in previous videos so we'll use a uh, transition data animation we'll use uh, automatic configuration of the of their um, video um the video file okay and we will use the high quality file and right now uh, sms software goes through all time moments uh, which was which was saved and creates the video fragment all right so at this moment we have to just wait a bit right so quarter is done let's wait uh, more a bit Right, so almost half of the simulation results have been um, have been prepared for for the video file. Right, so we have to wait uh, j just a bit more. Uh, also, it's it's already clear that um, that the full area, full simulated area, uh, is full with the water. Uh, anyways, let, let's wait. Only quarter of frames are le is left for analyzing and preparations for the for the video file all right so uh, we have to wait for another couple of frames right so right now video file is being processed so we have to wait for a couple of seconds until until the uh, prepared video file window will appear on the screen all right so we have it well, the video quality is quite low, so we are going to close it and open it in uh, in the regu regular file browser. Okay, so here we have uh, sms.avi and here we have the simulation module. That's the way how we can create a flood simulation from pre-prepared three-dimensional model of of analyzed area with um, with parameters and basimetry created so that's the way how we can do this thanks for watching the video subscribe to our channel and leave your comments